Hey guys, welcome back. Today we've got a bunch of biological molecule exam questions. I must warn you though, the last one is um, related to A2 content. So if you're a year 12, skip that question, okay? If you're a year 13, you have no choice. <laughs> um, so yeah, pause the video, try these questions out and continue on to see how I answer them. Okay, first one, first one. It took me <sighs> some time I'd say towards the middle of year 13 to realise the importance of respiratory substrates. I'll get on to why I'm saying this in a bit, but read the question first. Explain how the structure of galactose allows it to be used as a respiratory substrate. Now you see, we learn about respiration and stuff um, in A2, so if, but if you're in year 12, it doesn't matter. This is actually good for you to know. A respiratory substrate is something that you use for respiration, right? So that could be glucose, that could be galactose, that could be lipids, that could be proteins, which we tend to avoid. But those are respiratory substrates. So you now need to think, what are the properties of respiratory substrates in the first place? If we want it to provide energy, like essentially for respiration, what does it need to have? Okay, so then let's just actually read the information here just in case, right? So it's saying one of the monomers of lactose is a galactose. Huh. Um, the bacterium E. coli usually uses glucose as a respiratory substrate. Okay, respectable. Mm. Under certain con uh, circumstances, E. coli is able to use galactose as a respiratory substrate by breaking down lactose into glucose and galactose, and then blah, 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 whatever. Okay, fine. Let's go back to the question. Explain how the structure the structure of galactose allows it to be used as an RS. Hmm. Here are some things you need to know, okay? I can't lie, I would write this down as a little framework for any questions that say, oh, how does the structure of X um, allows it to be used for respiratory substrate? This is the same answer every time, because it's a very general answer. It's not specific to galactose, really. It's just general. So bonds contain energy. That's why you the enzymes break the bonds so that the energy is released, so that it can be used for respiration. You know, um, it's soluble. Okay, a respiratory substrate needs to be able to move inside cells, or else what's the point? Okay, cells, you know, muscles, all of this, contraction, movement, cytoskeleton, just so many things that require energy, right? So you need. That respiratory substrate to be soluble so that it can enter the cell inside you know um, and linking to that as a fourth point you could have said is that the hydrox um, hydroxy groups or the OH groups uh, can form hydrogen bonds with water that links to the solubility okay so just break it down look at what's important and just kind of like rephrasing something that you could probably answer the next one, bog standard answer every single time. Write this in your notes, guys, okay? We don't even need to read this. We're not that bad at this. So just explain why lactose is unable to cross membranes. Very simple, very cute, too large, unable to pass between the phospholipids. Same answer every time. But I want you to know something. You cannot have said phospholipid bilayer. No, 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 it's just phospholipids, okay? Because on the mark scheme, is it ignore if you added the bilayer part? We don't want that to be. Um, yeah. Cool. Now, this one. Uh, admittedly, I didn't get this correct when I did this in year 13. I, 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 remember, I think I was doing it in a past paper, and the questions before that... Actually, no, these, these were the questions before that, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Yeah, this was in the past paper, actually. I forgot. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was doing this, right? And But in my head, I was, you know, thinking about, like, biological molecules, module 2 stuff, and then, bam, this question comes up, and you best believe I'm not thinking about cellular, like, control. But I was wrong. <laughs> so this question is quite hard, to be honest. So it's just an explanation for this observation. What's the observation? It's saying that in order for lactose to enter the cytoplasm of E. coli, a protein is required. I can't lie, this should have been like my hint when I first did the question, silly me. Um, the E. coli living in the digestive system of young mammals are more likely to uh, contain this protein than E. coli living in the digestive system of old mammals. 
It's just an explanation for this observation. There are a few things we need to highlight here. Young versus old mammals. Think about it. Okay, if a mammal is young, they they need milk, right? And when you think lactose, you think milk. That's an association I want you to have if it wasn't already at the front of your head. Okay. Now, let's just take a step back and think. These young ones basically um, have the protein, but the old ones don't. Well, why? Well, because the young ones, like, diet has a high concentration of milk. Or they just drink a lot of milk, you know, for growth and stuff. So that would mean that it has a higher, or, like, a high lactose concentration. Okay. But now it's saying that, well, yeah, these young mammals actually do have this protein in order for lactose to enter the cytoplasm of the E. coli in the first place. Well... How, how, how is it that the protein's there, but for old mammals it isn't? Well, this is where cellular, stru- uh, cellular control comes in. Structural dr- uh, genes for lactose permease, which is the, pro- uh, yeah, the protein, really, um, gene is switched on. And that's why, you know, the lactose is able to enter the cytoplasm of these young um, mammals because the gene is switched on so that, you know, it can um, affect downstream and the stuff. That's pretty much it. Honestly, this is the sort of question I would keep revisiting, like, every two months, depending on when you're seeing this video or seeing this question, right? But definitely go through that question as one of those, like, before mocks, or before a level exam, a review, because it gets your brain thinking, and you realise that, oh, I need to actually... Sometimes the information is so important that I really need to microanalyze what is going on. For example, the young versus old. Okay. So I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, let me know. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.